Good afternoon. Please turn off all cell phones and electronic devices, and would everyone please stand for a moment of silence and a pledge to the flag. Deputy Clerk, please do roll call. Amo? Here. Anagnus Dacus? Present. Benton? Benelli? Here. Brescia? Here. Cheney? Here. Fagione? Here. Hines? Here. Kulisek? Here. Luhan? Here. Menuda? Here. O'Donnell? Here. Paduk? Here. Ruskevich? Here. Sassy? Here. Sierra? Here. Stigenga? Here. Sutherland? Here. Tortel? Here. Tui? Here. Vero? Here. 20 ayes. One absent, Madam Chair. Ladies and gentlemen, your first order of business today is to elect a chairman for the year 2019. I will now accept nominations. Legislator Fagione. Thank you. It is my pleasure to place in nomination the name L. Stephen Brescia as chairman of the Orange County Legislature. Mr. Brescia has led this chamber for the past five years with professionalism, honesty, and focus. For a young man, he brings a wealth of governmental knowledge to the table. Steve Brescia has been the mayor of the village of Montgomery since 1990. For clarity, I was still in high school. And legislator Lujan, well, he was only three years old. Steve Brescia was elected to the Orange County Legislature in 1994. He has served on each of our eight statutory committees. He has been or was named chairman of at least four of those committees. Steve is hardworking and very much involved in his community and our county. His resume speaks to itself for this. Member, volunteer, committeeman, an author. Yes, even an author. Well, maybe not an author, but a co-author. Steve has dedicated so much of his time to his community and to our county. Steve Brescia has been out in front leading on issues and topics that matter here in Orange County. His leadership spans across the aisle and focuses on results. It is for all these reasons that I place in nomination the name L. Stephen Brescia as chairman of the Orange County Legislature. Thank you. Clerk. I have a second. I'm sorry, Mr. Tui. I am honored to uh, second the nomination of L. Stephen Brescher as chairman of the Orange County Legislature for 2019. Uh, Legislator Brescher's compassion, openness, and integrity are ever present, and his willingness to share his vast knowledge I came to know firsthand as a freshman legislator with my many, many questions and concerns, and his door was always open. Therefore, once again, I second the nomination of L. Stephen Brescher for chairman of the Orange County Legislature. Thank you. The name of L. Stephen Brescia has been presented as chairman for the year 2019. Are there any other nominations? Legislator Paduke. Uh, this is not another nomination, but in the spirit of bipartisanship, we, the Democratic Caucus, support the nomination of L. Stephen Brescia as chairman of the Orange County Legislature. The Democratic Caucus has played a vital role in Orange County government and hopes to continue that role in 2019. Our diverse caucus has a lot to offer, and I hope that the chairperson will represent fairness, bipartisanship, and respect. The chairman has the responsibility to make appointments with fairness and inclusion, and I hope that the chairman understands the importance of working together to bring out the best this legislature can be. And with that, I would like to support the nomination of L. Stephen Brescher for chairman of the legislature for 2019. Thank you, um, there being no other nominations, may I have a motion to close nominations? Thank you. I now cast a ballot for L. Stephen Brescia as chairman of the Orange County Legislature. Do I have a second? All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? L. Stephen Brescia has been elected as chairman of the Orange County Legislature for the year 2019. O'Donnell. 
Thank you. It's my honor to uh, nominate Legislator Catherine Benelli as the majority leader of this legislature for the year 2019. Katie did a great job for us in 2018. She is open-minded, works well across the aisle with both the Democratic and Independent Party. First and foremost, though, she leads with integrity and always keeps the public first. Katie is an outstanding public servant. Her years as a member of the Town of Blooming Grove Town Board and then as the town supervisor prepared her and has served her well as her job as a county legislator. She's been outstanding in that position and has been chair of numerous committees. Last year, she was recognized by our caucus and elected to be our leader. She is an avid and alert listener. She gets all the information and is a decisive in, decision, in making her decisions, evaluating all the facts, and as I stated all, earlier, always keeping the public first. I therefore nominate Catherine Benelli as majority leader. Thank you, Legislator O'Donnell. Legislator Kulisek. Thank you. Um, I'm proud to announce that the Democratic Caucus has unanimously endorsed Michael Paduk to be our minority leader in 2019. Mr. Paduk exhibits his knowledge on the issues and has demonstrated his ability to work with others. He's not afraid to stand up for our caucus on issues that matter most to the people of Orange County. We look forward to addressing budget concerns, environmental issues, public safety issues, and all other issues that improve the quality of life in Orange County. Mr. Paduk is proud of our diverse caucus I look forward to working together to accomplish our goals. Congratulations, Mike. Thank you. Thank you, Legislator Kulsek. Legislator Nagdastakis. Thank you, Madam Clerk. It is my honor to state that the Independence Party Caucus has unanimously nominated Michael Amo to be party leader. Throughout the years, it almost seemed that uh, Mr. Amo was standing alone fighting for the principles of the Independence Party, but I could tell you that I've never seen the kind of growth in a caucus that he's achieved. Um, so it is my honor to nominate him as party leader. Thank you, Legislator Nagnasakis. Would um, Steve's um, sister Stacy um, come to the front of the um, auditorium and Steve will be given the um, oath by County Clerk Annie Rabbit. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York and I will faithfully discharge the duty of office of Chairman of the Legislature according to the best of my ability. So help me God. Now, would Annie Rabbit please present Chairman with his 25-year pin? So today is a big day for our Chairman. 25 years serving the public in so many different capacities. He's joined here with his family, his colleagues from the village that he serves as mayor. It's my great honor to stand here and serve you with the pin. For 25 years of service, we're very proud of you and continue to bring you. to administer the oath of office to um, Judge Onofre and Sheriff Cole. You can watch
Thank you very much. Before we uh, do this, Annie does the swearing in of the sheriff and Judge Onifrey. Just wanted to say a few words. I don't have a planned speech. Um, thank you to my colleagues. Thank you, uh, Legislator Fagione and Legislator Tui for making the nomination in the second. Um, you made me sound a lot better than I probably am, but, <laughs> but thank you. Um, it's a pleasure to serve you once again for the year 2019 coming up. Uh, we have an aggressive agenda. Um, we have a great working relationship with the legislature in my office, in the county exec's office, and so many other agencies and commissions throughout the county. Um, I've had a good working relationship with Mike Paduke, Minority Leader Paduke, and Party Leader Amo over the years for well over two decades, and Majority Leader Benelli for over two decades, two back to her days when she was supervisor of the town of Blooming Grove. Um, we have a lot of great ideas here, and as you well know, I have a, a, an open door excuse me, an open door policy. I'm always welcome new ideas. Sometimes I get a little hot-headed, but not too often, not too often. <laughs> Kevin's smirking over there. And he was laughing when somebody said young, too, but look, he's not far behind, I only think about five years. So, But I, I thank my sister for bringing the Bible up and uh, being here today, Joan Christiana, my girlfriend. Deputy Mayor Joanne Shields, we go back 32 years on the Village Board. Um, since I was a trustee in 87, so that's a long time. Not just the 29 as mayor, but three years as a village trustee as well. And Darlene and Dulcic is a village trustee. So thank you for coming here today. And thank you for voting for me for another year. Um, you know, we have a lot coming up. Uh, Rob has done a great job with the opioid committee starting that and engaging a lot of different agencies and getting awareness out there for the opioid epidemic. Uh, but we have a lot of things to do in the next year. Infrastructure, bridges, roads, heritage trail, hopefully uh, getting Camp LaGuardia sold or partially sold and back on the tax rolls. Um, a lot of big business coming to Orange County, a million square foot warehouses, a lot of jobs, a lot of good things going on. Hopefully we can do something with the three buildings in Newburgh, finally, um, whether the foundation does it or we do it. There's, uh, there's so many issues confronting the County of Orange and, and we're gonna hit them head on. So thank you again and it's a, it's a different thing we're gonna do today. We're gonna swear in the Sheriff, and he is, as well as Judge Onifrey, the um, Orange County Sheriff. Can't say enough about him. He's got one of the most accredited agencies in the, in the state of New York. Um, and you will be the longest tenured Sheriff in the history of Orange County, correct Sheriff? Yeah, does a, a superb job over there. Uh, we, we enjoy quite a bit of money with, from the ICE inmates um, that has to be housed somewhere, whether it's Orange County or it's gonna be, they're going to be housed somewhere in the United States. So um, he has a professional agency, and I invite Andy up to do his. Are we going to do Andy, your swearing in first or Judge Onifrey's? We're gonna do it at the same time. Do it at the same time? Okay. I always follow the sheriff. You always follow the sheriff. <laughs> And Judge Onifrey, too, a, a man of distinction who served the county well for many years, just a professional, approachable individual um, from the western end of the county. And unfortunately, he's going to be leaving us in the not-too-distant future. We wish we could keep him for another 20 years, but I congratulate both of you gentlemen. I, Carl E. Du Bois, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that, I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And I will faithfully discharge. I will faithfully discharge the duties office of the duties and office of Sheriff of Orange County. According to the best of my ability. That according to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. With the sheriff is his lovely wife Barbara, his son Austin, and your grandson's name again? Colton. Colton, okay, I better get that straight. Like number. <laughs> Graduations. Kevin, did you want to say a couple words about the sheriff or did I say enough? Okay, we'll finish up with.
Judge Onofrey. What are we doing? You want to say a few words? You want me to say a few words? I, I just really want to, um, uh, you know, thank my family uh, for coming here today, and obviously for all the support they've had for the last uh, 16 years. Uh, and obviously, uh, the office would not have those would not have those accreditations, Mr. Chairman. It wasn't for my staff right here, and I wish everybody give them a, a round of applause. An agency with uh, over 400 employees is not really easy to run. It really isn't unless you have a great staff around you. I don't take any of the credit unless I uh, share that credit uh, with my staff. Uh, and again, um, uh, we've done very well over the last 16 years. We brought the Sheriff's Office to the 21st century. Um, in you know, four more years, there's still a lot of work to do. We have a lot of challenges in Orange County. Uh, you know, uh, my partners uh, in government with the district attorney, uh, the uh, county clerk and where's the county executive? Where do you go? There he is with Steve. And um, uh, you know, without partners uh, of, of uh, these other three um, elected officials, and obviously the county legislature, uh, we, we really uh, it, it it all comes together and it facilitates the operation of the sheriff's office. Uh, and just one uh, other thing is, um, uh, Steve, good luck. And uh, Steve is going to go. Is, is being deployed next week. And uh, I, I couldn't I couldn't speak to the public without recognizing your service and thank you. Thank you. Andy, before we go, Chairman Hines, you want to say a couple? Andy, just one second. Chairman Hines is just going to say one thing. Sure. Uh, I, I uh, have been on the Public Safety Committee in the county here for nine years. I've chaired it for the last seven, so I've worked very closely with uh, Sheriff Du Bois and his command staff. And I think uh, when you surround yourself with good people, it makes you look even better. And the command staff at the sheriff's office has just been fantastic. Uh, the county was, uh, the whole country was hit with uh, school safety issues and the sheriff and his staff jumped right on it and put uh, armed sheriffs in the schools, any school district that wanted it, they uh, supported that program. Uh, just last month, we honored a, a deputy that uh, made a life-saving effort on behalf of a student who uh, was hired uh, by the sheriff's office as a school safety officer, although wasn't working in that capacity when he made that rescue. I also uh, am proud of the sheriff because he always thinks outside of the jail or outside of the box, if you will. Uh, he partnered with the Homeland Security uh, and made uh, our shooting range is going to be expanded with federal dollars and federal efforts and our local police agencies are going to be uh, able to use that range. Uh, we've made it part of our uh, uh, partnership with the state of New York as well where the governor is going to hopefully give us some shared services money. So it's another way of generating revenue even outside the jail. And, and without that generated revenue, we'd be in a lot different uh, position. So the sheriff has always uh, done a great job with respect to that as well. It's not only a police agency, a public service agency, and a public safety agency, but it's also been a revenue generator for the county of Orange, which you don't hear a lot of counties uh, able to say that because they just don't have that innovative thinking that we see in Sheriff Du Bois with his leadership. And uh, in, in closing, I'd just like to say congratulations on your re-election, uh, overwhelmingly uh, re-elected. Uh, because uh, the public respects what you do and how you do it, uh, how your agency does it, uh, certainly keeping the, the public uh, safe. Uh, they work closely with the fire departments, uh, various training, uh, safety. So all around, just a fantastic job. We're proud to have you for another four years as our sheriff, and congratulations. And Judge Onfrey, I know you're going to I don't want to say age out because it sounds terrible, but uh, the, the rules in the state have to change for people like you. Judge Onfrey has uh, been called upon to work throughout the state, not only here in Orange County, and they give him all these difficult cases that nobody else wants to handle because he's so uh, well-rounded in his experience. So we're, we're happy to have you as well for as long as the state allows us to. Uh, so uh, we're proud to have you as well. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Hines. Hi, Robert A. Onifre. Do you solemnly swear? Do solemnly swear? That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. I will faithfully discharge. I will faithfully discharge. The duty office of. Orange County Surrogate Judge. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my so, ability. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you.
a few brief comments. Uh, I can't believe it's been 10 years. Uh, it's gone by really uh, fast. I want to say it has been an absolute honor and privilege to serve the people of, of Orange County during the past 10 years. And uh, as Kevin referenced, everyone knows that when you turn 70, your, your brain turns to mush. So <laughs> after a year, uh, I will be leaving, even though reelected. But it has been a tremendous honor. Uh, if anyone would have told me at the beginning of my term that I'd be serving as acting Supreme Court Justice in addition to surrogate judge and acting surrogate for Westchester County and acting Supreme Court Justice for Nassau County with special assignment, I would have said you're crazy. But it has been an absolute pleasure and uh, I want to thank everyone for their support. I particularly want to thank my staff uh, at the surrogate court. Uh, I have a wonderful staff. I'm going to single out my chief clerk, Amy Miller, my deputy clerk, Chen Ledoux. Uh, I don't think you appreciate the volume we do. We do between four and 5,000 cases a year just in the surrogate court, another 1,000 in the Supreme <coughs> the acting Supreme Court in the trial court. And it doesn't happen alone. I have a wonderful staff. They are the hardest working staff uh, anyone could ask for, and it's been, a, and it's been a, an absolute privilege. And I also want to uh, thank my uh, high school sweetheart, uh, my bride of 46 years, for allowing me to run again for the, uh, for the extra year. It's been, it's, a, it's been a great privilege. Thank you very much. Congratulations again, Judge Jonifrey, and you'll never age out. You look younger than me, for God's sakes. This, this group up here gave me a lot of gray hairs in the last few years. Not you, not you ladies, these, these guys. No. <laughs> okay, we ready for, uh, you want attendance first, or you already got that? Okay. Okay, we'll start with number one. Okay. Legislator Benelli, resolution adopting the legislative manual for the County of Orange and the rules of order and procedure for the Orange County Legislature as previously amended, pursuant to section 2.02A of the Orange County Charter, section 153 of the County Law, and article 2C1E, article 3, introduction, and article 4E1A and B of the said legislative manual. Discussion? Yes, party leader Amo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I certainly will support it. I think it's a great idea, but I, I, Mr. Fajon and I have had this conversation. I think it's about time that, I know she's talked to the council, it's about time that we take a, a thorough look at the administrative and legislative manual and the committee and, and really try to find out where the changes need to be made to affect any changes we have in law and practice in our county and state. I hope that, I hope that that becomes a top priority for Mr. Fajon, if he's chairman. I'm sure it will be. You know, we've done that periodically way back to when you were rules chairman, when I, I was rules chairman, and Katie, and so on and so forth. And um, we're always open to that throughout the year. Okay, I was remiss in not acknowledging the county exec who's here too, and uh, we wish him Godspeed when he has to go abroad. And also the district attorney was here, David Hoover, as well. So, oh, well, probation director, I'm sorry, Derek. Good to see you. No, no, we were recognizing you. And Deputy County Executive. Thank you very much, Derek Miller. And Ke Deputy County Exec Kerry Poor is here as well. Okay, we're on to number two. Oh, roll call. Okay. First. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis? Cheney? Yes. Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Lujan? Aye. Menuda? O'Donnell? Griskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Tartell? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 20 present, one absent. Okay, number two. Legislator Benelli, resolution establishing legislative calendar for 2019. 
pursuant to Article 2, C, 1, F of the Legislative Manual. Second. Majority Leader Benelli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At this time, I would like to make an amendment to this particular resolution, and the amendment would be to change the March 7, 2019 meeting to 7 o'clock p.m. And in addition to that, change the July 2, 2019 meeting to 3.30 p.m. Second. Second. Discussion? Yes. Legislator Lujan. Uh, I'd like to make an amendment at this time for May 2, 2019, 3.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. In addition to the other, we're only voting on one. Separate to that. Okay, we'll do one amendment at a time. Yeah, okay, if there's no objections, we'll take a roll call on Legis uh, Majority Leader Benelli's motion. Yes, John Bureau. Okay. okay, roll call. We can go to your amendment after we vote on this one. Okay. Okay, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Du? Yes. Amo? Yes. Agnostakis? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Lujan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassi, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tautel, Tui, Biro, Brescia. 20 ayes. Okay. Motion, motion carries. carries. Okay. And the uh, legislator Lujan is making a motion to change the May 2nd meeting from 3.30 to 7 o'clock p.m., correct? And we had a second to that? Okay, second by uh, Minority Leader Paduke. Discussion? Yes. Uh, in regards to the calendar, um, I did talk with the chairman about this. Uh, we were hoping to get uh, quarterly, nightly meetings. Uh, I guess the Republican caucus uh, is set against that. We had three last year. We're cutting it down to two this year. Um, I think it, the quarterly meetings uh, would allow greater participation in the, by the public. And it's, uh, I think it's unfortunate that we're cutting out meetings rather than adding. Thank you. Great. Further discussion? Uh, legislator Nagastakis and Legislator Totel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, while I certainly understand my Democratic colleagues' uh, interest in uh, making it a 7 o'clock meeting, I think we've had these discussions year after year over the last eight years, and um, I think we've looked at the record, and people don't turn out any more at nighttime than they do in the daytime. It always seems that the turnout is 100% correlated to topics on the agenda or hot topic issues within the community. Um, making a night session would also inconvenience some people that have uh, difficulty with night travel. And um, I think it also potentially increases overtime pay for those reasons. Unfortunately, Mr. Paduka, I will be against it. Legislator Chateau. Yes, well, I respect um, what Legislator Anagnostakis has said in the attendance record, um, that attendance is driven by topic and by what's going on within the communities. I also think um, it would be more fair to hold more meetings at night, like Legislator Duke had said, about um, it being able for the public who work, generally work, to have that choice of whether they can be here or not, or whether they have to take off of work to attend one of our meetings. So I support having a orderly evening meeting throughout our calendar. Thank you. Okay, Majority Leader Benelli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would just like to reaffirm uh, what has been previously said. And you know, we have this discussion every reorganization meeting. And time and time again, yes, there were three <laughs> night meetings last year. But if you look at those meetings, they were very poorly attended. In fact, they were probably one of the worst attended meetings. Um, I think a consideration, and Mr. Stockus did point it out, as far as staff needing to attend those meetings to whether they have a department head has something on our agenda or not, um, it is helpful to have them here. And um, that's why we do most of the meetings during the day. It is, um, we can accommodate, and our meetings are now on the website. They have been for a while. They are, well, they're not televised live. They are definitely, you can pull up any one of the videos on our website, see all of that, so everybody knows what's going on. So Republican caucus in discussion decided that the two meetings would suffice for this year. And we'll see how it goes. Can Legislator Luan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
And uh, again, a very fruitful conversation about whether or not, uh, you know, what's, what's better and what has been uh, reported as, as most statistically uh, sound. But uh, the truth is, is that most city council meetings are around seven o'clock. Um, some people do attend them, some people don't. Um, the point is, as a legislature, as, as elected officials, we should make ourselves as, as accommodating as possible. Um, the reality is that most people are working at 3.30 to 5 p.m. Um, the, if we are opening it to 7 o'clock, at least it opens the possibility that if people do choose to be there on that particular meeting that they can. And it is our responsibility as, as elected officials to make that as much of a possibility as, as we can. So uh, respectfully, I, I agree, you know, unfortunately, that has been the case. Um, but we should, you know, think about, you know, the possibility that, that people might show up more often if we did more uh, late meetings and if, if this was something that was more of a, of a, a consistency. So um, thank you. Legislator Wiscavich. Yeah, uh, Legislator Juan brings up a good point. A lot of uh, uh, city council meetings and town board meetings happen in the evening, and I know many of us as legislators like to attend those meetings and be accessible to our towns and uh, constituents there. So that having more of our meetings in the evening makes it harder for us to attend those meetings. So I would uh, be in favor of um, fewer. Thank you. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. I, I've heard this argument over the years on both sides. I, originally, we, when I first came in and Rob was here, we had zero night meetings. And then we upped it to, I think, four at one point at a high level and then three. Uh, but, you know, if we have them at the same time at night as villages, towns, and cities, those elected officials aren't going to be able to come here and we're not going to be able to go there. And there are many legislators that like to go to those meetings. And I just think we're going to um, worsen the situation. So, um, you know, I think two is fair, reasonable. It's a, somewhat of a compromise. Uh, Party Leader Amo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I, uh, I agree with you and, and, and uh, point to the number that we're looking at is fair. I think also to follow uh, Ms. Lutel, Lutel, Lutel's point um, and that people are working, remember, and I don't have the data specifically, but remember, we allow the public to speak at, at the end of every one of our meetings, and I suspect if we look at the time that those happen, we'll probably find that they're after 5 o'clock at night. People wanted to come and speak to us and address questions. They have the right to show up from work and come here. So we do have the opportunity. It's not closing the door totally. That's a good point. And usually the sign up is ahead of the meeting. Do we allow sign up at the end of a meeting for but non agenda items at the end? We do allow sign ups after? No. No, we don't? No, we don't. Okay, so in, in line with what uh, Party Leader Amos said, maybe we can loosen that for the people that want to come and speak at the end of the meeting, um, if they feel they're going to get here. Mm -hmm. Take care of that next year. Yep. Next year. This year. This year. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Roll call. Point, point of, right. Yes. No. A yes vote would be to agree with Legislator Luhan, and a no vote would be not to agree. Correct. Vanelli? No. Paduk? Yes. Emo? No. And Agnostakis? No. Cheney? No. Fagione? No. Hines? No. Kulisek? Yes. Luhan? Aye. Manuda? No. O'Donnell? No. Riskevich? No. Rasassi? No. Sierra? Aye. Staganga? No. Sutherland? No. Twatel? Aye. Tui? Bureau? No. Brescia? No. Five ayes, 15 noes, motion fails. Okay, number three. No, exactly. As amended. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The resolution as amended with the one passing. Vanelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Luhan? Menuda? O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Staganga, Sutherland, Tartel, Tui, Bureau, Brescia. 20 eyes. Okay, number four. Three, I'm sorry. Designation by members of the county legislature representing the Republican Party of Newspapers to publish the concurrent resolutions of the state legislature and election notices to be published in 2019 pursuant to section 214 of county law. One, to publish the concurrent resolutions of the legislature, the Orange County Post, PO Box 405, Bellsgate, New York, 12584, News of the Highlands, Inc., PO Box 
P.O. Box 518, Cornwall, New York, 12518. Times Community Newspapers, 300 Stony Brook Court, Newburgh, New York, 12550. Number two, to publish the election notices issued by the Secretary of State, the Orange County Post, P.O. Box 405, Vailsgate, New York, 12584. Times Community Newspapers, 300 Stony Brook Court, Newburgh, New York, 12550. News of the Highlands, Inc., P.O. Box 518, Cornwall, New York, 12518. Warwick Advertiser, Photo News, 20 West Avenue, Chester, New York, 10918. The Warwick Valley Dispatch, 2 Oakland Avenue, P.O. Box 594, Warwick, New York, 10990. Times Herald Record, 40 Mulberry Street, Middletown, New York, 10940. Second. Okay, discussion? Receive and file, I'm sorry. Stand corrected. Roll call. We don't do roll Okay, we only do this once a year. That's once a year. Yep, that's okay. That's okay. That's so we're good. Now we go to number four. four. Number four. Okay. No, number four. I have to read each one of the four. Yeah. Seven. Okay. Thank you. Okay. My number, orientation. Number four. Designation by members of the Orange of the County Legislature representing the Democratic Party of newspapers to publish the concurrent resolutions of the state legislature and election notices to be published in 2019 pursuant to Section 214 of the County Law. Number one, to publish the concurrent resolutions of the legislature, the Goshen Independent, 132 West Main Street, Goshen, New York, 10924, Hudson Valley Press, P.O. Box 2160, Newburgh, New York, 12550. Number two, to publish the election notices issued by the Secretary of State, Times Community Newspapers, 300 Stony Brook Court, Newburgh, New York, 12550, Times Herald Record, 40 Mulberry Street, Middletown, New York, 10940, Goshen Independent, 132 West Main Street, Goshen, New York, 10924, Hudson Valley Press, P.O. Box 2160, Newburgh, New York, 12550. Number five. Designation by members of the... Yes. Sorry, Lori. Yes. On number four, um, the News of the Highlands is not there. I'd like to amend number four to include the News of the Highlands in both one and two. It's already... Yeah, it's included. Uh, Who's the high one? Is included? Yeah. Um, yeah we, I think the Republican Party already has the news of the Highland, do we not? So they're already included. They're not. They're not. Kicked out, Lori. Yeah, we usually designate different newspapers between among the caucuses. Right. Yeah. So, so they're included, Lori, but it's just not by your caucus. That's all. You can still read it. And still, it'll still be designated. Yeah, both of them should be the same. No. 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 The newspapers are selected out of the caucuses and the purpose is that the uh, newspapers are supposed to represent the political views of your uh, caucus. So. Okay, I understand that, but this, as I'm saying, this was the first time seeing the list of newspapers for the Democratic caucus. It wasn't brought to me prior to this, and I thought I could make an amendment on the floor to this. That's all I was asking. It's usually done uh, in the caucuses. Uh, and we'd have to wait to next year to address it. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Point of well, order, I, but if I, you designate, if the Democratic caucus designates the news of the Highlands, do you want to take, take a break? Yeah, I believe, right? Or can we have? You can have both. It doesn't matter. I mean, it costs us any more. no, it doesn't cost you any more. But I, I mean, it, it's something that I think your caucus wants to talk about whether they want to do that or not. So you want to take a brief recess? Point of order. Yes. Point of order. Summation. Yep. Okay. Where were we? Where were you? Number five alive. 
Resignation by members of the county legislature representing the Republican Party of newspapers to publish all local laws, notices, and other matters required by law to be published in 2019, pursuant to subdivision two of section 214 of the county law. Number one, to publish as one of the official newspapers of the county legislature of the county of New York, I'm sorry, county of Orange, all local laws, notices, and other matters required to be published by the county legislature. The Orange County Post, PO Box 405, Bellsgate, New York, 12584. Number two, to publish as one of the official newspapers of the county legislature of the county of Orange, all local laws, notices, and other matters required to be published by the county legislature. Warwick Advertiser, Photo News, 20 West Avenue, Chester, New York, 10918. Number three, to publish as one of the official newspapers of the county legislature of the county of Orange, all local laws, notices, and other matters required to be published by the county legislature. News of the Highlands, Inc., PO Box 518, Cornwall, New York, 12518. Four, to publish as one of the official newspapers of the county legislature of the county of Orange, all local laws, notices, and other matters required to be published by the county legislature. The Warwick Valley Dispatch, 2 Oakland Avenue, PO Box 594, Warwick, New York, 10990. Second. Okay, number six. Designation by members of the county legislature representing the Democratic Party of newspapers to publish all local laws, notices, and other matters required by law to be published in 2019, pursuant to subdivision two of section 214 of the county law. Number one, to publish as one of the official newspapers of the county legislature of the county of Orange, all local laws, notices, and other matters required to be published by the county legislature. Times Community Newspapers, 300 Stony Brook Court, Newburgh, New York, 12550. Number two, to publish as one of the official newspapers of the county legislature of the county of Orange, all local laws, notices, and other matters required to be published by the county legislature. Hudson Valley Press, P.O. Box 2160, Newburgh, New York, 12550. Sure. Okay, number seven we vote on, correct? Yes. Um, it's my understanding, if I remember correctly, every legislator has to sign each yes. of these documents. Thank you for that reminder. No, everybody stick around afterwards. Okay, it was in my notes, too, from, from Jean. So thank you for that, though. Okay, number seven. Legislator Benelli, resolution designating newspapers published within the county as official newspapers for the publication of all local laws, notices, and other matters required by law to be published in 2019, pursuant to subdivision two of section 214 of the county law. Second. Discussion? Yes, party leader Emo. Emo added. I don't get the pick of paper. Why is that anyway? I think it's because it's not fair, is it? no political bias. That's not why. <laughs> I just don't know for sure. <laughs> Pursuing to state law. Okay, thanks, Andrea. Okay, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Lujan? Aye. Menuda? O'Donnell? Riskevich? Sassi? Sierra? Staganga? Sutherland? Tortel? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 20 ayes, Mr. Chairman, and the desk is clear. Okay, before we adjourn, I just want to uh, also acknowledge that we had the ribbon cutting ceremony for the Orange County Airport new runway, which is makes it a lot safer for the airport and definitely the Village of Montgomery flight um, entrance and exit. Um, and Majority Leader Benelli was there, Jim Kulasek was there, um, Airport Committee Chairman John Vero was there, and who else am I missing? Peter Tui, of course. Freeze, it was freezing out there today, but we made it. It was a great accomplishment for the County of Orange. Most of the legislature voted for that improvement, mostly federally funded, by the way. Majority Leader Benelli, you want to say a few words? Yes, thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to take the opportunity to thank my fellow caucus members for the confidence they've placed in me again for the year 2019. And I'd like to particularly thank Legislator O'Donnell, who has been a great friend, a great supporter. And thank you for the very kind words. <coughs> I really appreciate it, Jimmy. And thank you to my fellow leaders, Mr. Paduke and Mr. Amo. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you, and I look forward to continuing to work for all of the legislators in all of the issues that we have here facing Orange County. And we've done a great job in 2018, so 2019, I think we're off to a very good start. So thank you all very much. Thank you. And see Carrie Ann or Kelly to sign the designations, correct? Right over here. Yes. It is January 29th at what time? 4.45. Okay. Town of Palm Tree. Town of Palm Tree. Okay. Minority Leader Paduk. Yeah, I also would like to thank uh, the members of the Democratic Caucus for their support this year. 
Uh, it's kind of tough when you only have five members working against a group of uh, six, 15 plus one. Sorry, Michael. Um, but we do have a lot of great initiatives planned for this year. Um, we have a lot of a very diverse caucus, and we're looking forward to working with you all, hoping that you know we can make some progress this year that benefits the people of Orange County. So thank you, Mr. Kulisek, for uh, nominating me and for my caucus for their support. Thank you. Yes, Legislator Nagin Sykes. Actually, I just signed the document. Am I supposed to sign it? I'm not seeing the Republican caucus, even though I'm a Republican. Uh, well, you're still a Republican, correct? Correct. So, you can sign it. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Motion to adjourn? So moved. All in favor? Aye.